Um, so briefly, and that is everybody's kind of, the computers are slowly picking up. Um, briefly, how this started with me using Google Drive in the classroom started pretty much by accident. And it started with me and Chris Feta, um, who used to be a student here who moved out to California and works on commercials now and is trying to make commercials for uh, public television, cable, and everything. And we just started using Google Drive, collaborating on scripts back and forth. And it took me forever to realize like, I could do this in the classroom as well. It wasn't something that I planned on. It just was like, well, I'm having so much fun doing this with my friend 3,000 miles away. Why not use it in the classroom? And so I just gave it a try this semester. So it's been working out amazingly well. So once you have an account, you sign into Google. It brings you to, and this is just the one that I use for my, for my English um, 091. So these are the students here, these are the things they're sharing with me, but it's this that we want to get into. This particular little icon up here is your launching pad. That opens up your apps, the nine basic Google Drive apps. There's many more all down here that connect to all other third party apps that somebody who's much more tech savvy than I am would maybe get into. But for us, for our composition courses, we just need Google Drive. Once you click on Google Drive, it'll open up a basic kind of home page like this. And from here, I'm just going to kind of open up my notes. Wait, Brian. Yes. You, you had the icon and then it dropped down to the, um, the, the how did you? OK, did you so right from there, yes. once you have that, you can just go down and click right on Drive. Oh, yep. Sorry about that. Nope. That opens up your drive, and for most of you, haven't, if you haven't been using Drive, it's going to be blank. Here's your Create button right up here. From there, it's going to show you all the things that you can create. But let me just kind of go through this. All right. This, and I don't ever do PowerPoint at all. I, I'm very not tech savvy at all, even right to PowerPoint. And, but as I was doing this, I figured, let me try Google Drive's presentation, they call it. Extremely user-friendly. Extremely user-friendly. So it worked out really well. At the beginning of the semester, when you're working with students, advise them to make a Gmail account and advise them to make it a professional kind of sounding name. Something, though, just their name will usually work with BCC added to it. It's important because it's good that they have a professional email and not like Hot Pony 65 or something, you know? And like, it's, it's really good for like the sharing aspect of it. They can't really share if they can't remember each other's names and be able to recognize each other's names. Um, again, something that I have no idea, but it's probably important. There's 15 gigabytes of free storage for Drive. I'm using it all semester long, and it still has me at like 0%, 1%. I mean, I don't, I don't think we will fill it up for our purposes with our classes. And here's just me going through the motions. I'll catch us right up. Once you get into the Gmail, you go to the Drive applicator, the launch pad there. All of this stuff is, yeah, ask any questions, please. Help me along. Yeah, so it's probably a silly question. It's not really about exactly what we're doing. But I'm thinking about the PowerPoint that you did in you did this in, in the presentation yep. right here. Yep. So let's say you had to present at a conference. Yep. You just have it on the in the cloud, basically. So as long as they have internet, you can get to your presentation. In the cloud, and just like we practice or preach to the students, have a backup. You can also download this to a flash drive. So there's multiple ways to save it, so you don't ever have to yeah, get into that situation. To me that that's a better way to download, go with PowerPoint. There's a button. There's like seven different formats that you can save it in. PDF, ODT, RTF. Um, this becomes really important. I, I'm also doing this with the Gateway students, the Gateway to College students. Like a lot of students on this particular campus are all over, we can't always assume that they're going to have home computers, particularly with Gateway students um, coming from different uh, environments at home. They, they might not have a home computer. Even if they do have a home computer, it's even more of a stretch to assume they're going to have Microsoft Office. There's many ways around that issue, but I find Google Drive is the easiest because composing in Google Documents is essentially free Word. It's exactly like Word. It functions just like Word. 
and it's perfect for the students. Presentations is free PowerPoint. Spreadsheets for, as I've said, businessy types. I've never done a spreadsheet before. And forms, if we have time, we can talk a little bit about forms, because that's really useful for quick assessments, either before a class or after a class. But we'll get into all of these as we go along. With the Google Documents, it functions almost identically to Word. It saves automatically while typing. And my only suggestions as we move along is you just want to make sure that the students are creating very clear file names. So rough draft one, rough draft two. Because when they share it with you, that's how it's going to appear in your inbox, just as if it was an, an email. So I'm learning. like Right away, I tell the students, this is what you save it. That way, it's really clear for me. And I have folders set up for everything. I've noticed as I've been reading online, the drive can get really out of hand if you just have people sending you stuff and they're sharing stuff and it's not clearly labeled. It becomes really difficult to sort through. So now I'm much more proactive. As soon as they start a project, I tell them exactly, this is what you name this file. And it's been working a lot smoother. Here you can also with Google Docs, you can upload anything. So if you've written something in Microsoft Word, you can upload it to Google Docs. You can download stuff from Google Docs into PDFs, into all those other formats that we were talking about. And you can also publish. It will give you a way that it will create a, a web address where you can then put it on a blog. And it will link off of a blog or off of e-learning. And it will bring somebody right to Google Docs. And they don't necessarily have to have a Gmail account to access those. I don't use the publishing that much. Again. I'm like the least tech savvy person to be kind of running you through this, but I've, I'm teaching you about exactly how I've been using it. So. When you use the forms feature, mm -hmm. if you wanted to create an assessment and give students a link to yep. use it, is that published? Yes, I mean, it depends on where, yeah, where you put it, because you can share it with, in their email, or you can put it on like the e-learning site and okay. just have them access the e-learning site. They can also, once they have their smartphones, synced, they can also look at it on their smartphones as well. Mm -hmm. So this is, if you haven't seen this commercial yet, this is kind of what you can do. Hopefully it plays. Hold on. This is exactly what I think students find really engaging with just one feature of Google Docs. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that, JP. Well, here she comes. She's a scary lady. She's an angry attacker. She's a man gobbler. Eater. She's a man eater. Again, that's just one feature of how you can use it as that instantaneous collaboration. Um, and it's, it's just that simple. Once you share, once you're both looking at the same document, which is what we'll be doing in a little while, it will notify you who else is looking at your document with an icon in the top right-hand corner. And as, as we're doing instantaneous collaborations, it pops up just like that. And again, as far as the going into kind of why I think it works, is it makes the drafting, composing, editing feel more alive. That's the only way that I can kind of describe it. It makes it feel like a more engaging, active, never-ending process in a way, which I think many of us realize that's what editing is. It goes on forever until it's kind of taken away from you, until you've got the deadline. So that's what I really like about it. And I'm seeing the students using it a lot, um, using that feature. Instead of then just, well, OK, I printed out my rough draft make a few little changes, then it's like I made another one. And it's always these big spaces in between where they're not really working on the document. It also makes you think we could have a course theme song. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> a new genre. So that is one way, and I'm going to go back, but that's one way, instantaneous collaboration. As you're writing, you can write together, and you can make comments. This is the other fairly traditional way that you comment on a peer's paper with you know, instructional review and peer review, just the traditional comment feature. Very straightforward. Something you like or don't like, you highlight it, you hit the comment feature, which we'll get to, and it just pops up a square over here. You put in your comment. 
I've always used this, even before I was using Google Drive, when I'd have somebody send me an attachment with Microsoft Office. My penmanship is awful. I do much better correcting student papers like this. I'm clearer. And with this, too, you can put all sorts of um, links. So if they're having problems with comma splices, I can say, OK, this is a comma splice. As we've talked about, follow this link to Grammar Girl, which is a very interactive, student-friendly grammar website. They can click right on it, right there. It pops up about a little quick lesson about comma splices, anything. Could have hyperlinked to the Purdue OWL web page, go right to the exact page. Can I, can I, Grammar yep. Girl is just like a little, it's a YouTube thing, right? Grammar Girl is, yeah, it's a podcast. It's right. called Grammar Girl's Quick and Dirty Grammar Fixes or something like that. One of those websites where 99% of the time this will work. Yeah. That kind of thing. And it's really effective. And again, it's much more effective for me to put it into a comment with just the link where if they're looking at it, they can click on it. So students can do this, and I do it as well. And we're going to look at some in a minute. Um, once they've dealt with the issue, there's also a button where you can resolve the comments. So you're just not littering the paper with comments. Once they fix it, they can click, it's resolved. I've done this. You can also set up a notification where you get an email when they do resolve it. That can get a little overwhelming when you get 50 emails in your box saying, I fixed this, I fixed that, comma, splice. So I don't, I don't tend to set that up and make it mandatory unless it was something really major. Like your intro is missing a thesis statement. That's a comment. Please respond to me when you've addressed this. Click the resolve and email me. And that can be really beneficial. Again, I think it puts a little bit more of the I've got to do this mentality. I've got to fix this before I can move on. That kind of a thing. Oh, no, you didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. And we're going to look at that in a minute, too. Is that we can, there's a great way to review all these changes as well. So that's two ways. There's the instantaneous collaboration, the Hall and Oates thing. There's the regular traditional comment feature. And then there's also something called just live chat, which is basically texting or instant message or anything like that, where if they've got their paper up and they just see that I'm on their paper, they can click a little dialog box, it pops up a text box, and we can just talk right there, just like you would in Google Chat or texting on a phone. That's it. The one big thing that I found with this feature, there's three ways that I figured out how to comment, if I'm home correcting papers and I'm on my instructor Gmail, I put that I'm available, because I am. I'm correcting papers anyway, or I'm correcting tests. If somebody's working on their paper right then and there and they see my little green light is on, they can shoot me a message real quick. Hey, I'm struggling with this, or what is this? I feel like by addressing it as they're writing, I'm it's also helpful for the student, but it's saving me from needing to correct that later in the process. It's instantaneous, hands-on instruction. I don't recommend doing that like on your day off where you're not, you know, you don't want to be bothered, but if I'm sitting by the computer, I'll leave, yeah, I'll, I'll leave that on. I'll leave that feature on, and you get more engagement in the writing process. And they, it, I think it breaks down the barrier, too, because they're more comfortable with texting the students now. And I think it breaks down that barrier can be a little bit more informal. They can ask questions in a way that they're more comfortable about. And we get a little bit more engagement on maybe an area where if they didn't want to ask a question in class because they're shy and they sit in the back, this becomes a way that they can engage with me very quickly and, and openly. Now, the all-seeing eye, right? About all of this, like the revision, the very NSA kind of ominous in a way. <laughs> you can track everything that they do. And I, I make sure to tell the students this as well. Um, it's not like something I'm keeping secret from them. So for instance, if I go back to my Google Drive, I go into this one. I asked the student for permission. He said, no problem. We were working on annotated bibliographies. This is what he shared with me. It looks just like a traditional Microsoft document. Um, so he's got it all there. If I go up to File and I go to See Revision History, it brings everything up on the side that was fixed. And who helped? So here's a peer that was helping him along. There's some of my comments. So you can see it as you go through where he changed things by date as you go. So here, here's one of the changes he made. It's just an interesting way, again, and when I share this with the students, they know it too. They can look and follow the progress of their, of their writing. 
So he, he deleted this sentence. You can bring up the comments, previous comments that were there as well. What did, I, what did I say? What did other students say? Here, a peer helped. Nightwalker is an article. So this, this student made the suggestion. Again, he crossed out story. and He said, you've got to call it an article rather than a story. It's, more, it's not fiction. It's, it's an article. So how do you bring up the comments as well? Just with the comments is just see revision history. It's right in file. Oh, in the comments itself, you click on the comment box. Yeah. So even things that have been resolved, that are clicked as resolved? Yep, will stay. It really does track everything. Everything. Um, right down to the center. I mean, from the minute that person creates that document to the time they're printing it and saying this is a final draft, you can see every single change that everybody who went to that website did, that, that document, I should say. It's really helpful. And again, it's a way. I know in the past we've done this traditionally by you can take a, a rough draft and look at the second draft and say, I clearly see you didn't do much. This makes it a little bit more tangible to me. I don't know. It makes it, again, it breathes life into that process. And I think it makes them a little bit more accountable. I'm going to go back um, as I move forward. So the students' instructors can track and monitor all changes. And it can also be used as a backup restore. So all those points of history that were on the right, anytime you click on one of those, it says, would you like to restore or go back to this version? In case there was ever a mistake or something that they, I, I, I messed up. I went too far here. And I, I liked my previous draft the previous day. They can go and they can restore that and use that. Kind of like that feature. Before like, I get more, let you get hands on if we really want to here, um, just what I, I don't want to come across as like a cyber guru tech fanatic at all. In my class, in my class, this is one supplemental phase. I'm not relying, I'm not there yet. I'm not ready to just say no paper at all. So this is just one of the aspects, and I still rely heavily. I'm not conserving paper by any stretch of the imagination. I wish I could say I'm saving trees and everything else, but I'm really not. It doesn't replace traditional hard copy in, my, uh, in class peer review. They can do all those peer reviews there, but I still say, OK, tomorrow, come in with the hard copy, and you're going to exchange the paper. I just think it's nice that they can do both. And I think it's advantageous to do both. And then at the very end, I only accept traditional hard copies for the grades. I don't see why one day you, wouldn't, you couldn't just go right over to not having the paper. I'm just not, I'm not there yet. I'm not comfortable with that idea. Because I still do preach the whole idea you do better editing when you have the paper and you walk away from the computer and you sit down. I, I make sure, I mean, that's my, my belief, so I make sure to really stress that. OK. I, I wanted to say, make one point, too. It's interesting that we were looking at an interview in one of my classes. I teach English 101. Yep. An interview with uh, um, Zuzak, who wrote the, the um, book Thief mm -hmm. that came out several years ago and it's being made into a movie. And he's a young author. He's in his 30s. Um, writes for you know young adults. Yep. Um, he he hand writes first right. his documents yeah. before he, he before he goes to the computer which I thought was really interesting because he would be a digital native, right. I would think. Yep. But he doesn't do that. He writes for whatever reason. I'd like to find out why, but he writes it out longhand. So not everybody is Absolutely. You know, doing everything on the computer, even published authors. You know, he, he does do it on the computer eventually. Right. He starts out handwriting it. I, mean, I thought that was really interesting. Absolutely. Absolutely. As a little aside. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and uh, so again, as I'm, this is the first semester where I've totally embraced this and starting with the very first class. And I think it was fortunate that it was in English 91, where I'm meeting with the students four days a week, that I was able to take time to have a class just devoted at the very beginning to setting up a Gmail account, to guiding them through this process. <laughs> and as I was moving along, I really learned some things, such as make, I, I've already stressed some of this, make sure they're clearly labeling. And then I utilize folders extensively, even for this, just this one class, make sure. And of course, as I was saying, I, I make sure and I download. I never want to trust these computers. I never want to show up and think that I have um, a peer review sheet ready and it's on Google Drive. And I'm relying only on that. I make sure. I just never want to get into that situation. I feel like they'd gut me. 
And then I'd, and then I'd have to give in when they f said something like that too, you know, like, well, you forgot one time and Google went down, so I never want to get in that position. Um, so again, if any questions, let me know, but I'm going to share something soon with everybody. Go ahead. Question about the folders? Yes. When students save something into your account, that's how it works? Yes. Do they have to put it in the right folder? No. It's, no. That is my end of it. I can format it any way I want. It doesn't affect their drive screen. Theirs can look like a total mess over here because they're not using folders. I try to get them. But when they share it with me, that's shared onto my side. I can organize it any way I want. You move it I move it in. It yeah, I move it in. I mean, like an okay. email or yeah. If you, really, uh, if you really wanted to, I'm sure you could get down to everybody organizing it together and they could share their folder with you. I just like, they, they're just sending it and I pop them into a folder as I, as I read them. So you read it, you comment, and then you share that back with them and they see what you said. Exactly. And, uh, okay, so you could put a grade on there and they would be the only people, they, uh, other students wouldn't see that. Yep. So only they would see it. Right, because I'm going to, we can s do this right now. We can do this right now. When you share, you click on the share button. You utilize these to see who can see it, who can edit it. So if I make it to the point where I want to put a grade down and I don't want any other student, I can deny them access to that document from there on forward. If the student decides they want to share it again, they can, but they'd have to go through the process of resharing. They would. Once, it, once I say I wanted to write some comments and I just, you know, for privacy matters and I do that, I can, I can get rid of all the other sharers and then just mark it as just for, the, just for the student. Utilizing these permission settings can be very helpful. So, and it's very easy. It doesn't get seen by the other people until you share it? Until the student shares it. Until the student shares it. And you share very simply. Once they know, you, I went up and I clicked on share mm -hmm. and you just invite them. You just click in their email address here. I guess I'm confused because of the example of the spontaneous composing, okay. which made it look like people were looking at documents at the same time and making comments. At the same They'd time. have to share right away. So you share first. Yeah, you share right, right away. You're working on it. Yep. Other people can be looking at it yep. as well. Yep. You share right away. As soon as um, for instance, when we're working on SA3, as soon as I paired them up, you, you two are going to be working together. They just shared right away. So if you're grading it, then what you might do is not share it until you're done with your comments. Correct. Because while you're making the comments, no one can see it if you haven't chosen to share it when you first clicked on it. Correct. Right. And what I'm also saying, too, is this is where I would draw my own personal limitations. I wouldn't put anything personal on this. That's why I still like the paper. Mm -hmm. I'd keep all my comments general and and so that everybody can see it, because I also like the idea of all the students seeing everybody's papers, seeing all my comments, seeing all their comments. And if I really get to the point where I need to get really serious and say something that I don't want anybody else to do, I'll do that on paper. I just, I'm not comfortable again yet with all, every single privacy feature of this. So for people that have a Gmail address, I can share this right now with you. So why don't we try that? See how it works. I just need people's Gmail addresses. Go ahead. I'm instructing NADO. N-A-D-E-A-U. -E -E and I'm going to say that you can edit. So over here, can edit, can comment, can view. I'm just going to go for the full, can edit. I can click or unclick this, notify you, or, and I can even add a little message. Yeah. JP, take a look at this. Share and save. I can do another one. J. Thomas Grady, one word. J. Thomas Grady. Somebody else? Um, I'll spell mine for you. Thank you. Uh, D. 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 E. R. E. R. Say it one more time. O I, sorry. O I. A N. A N. Twelve. Twelve. At Gmail. It's my maiden name, but it's not okay. pronounceable. Okay. <laughs> um, it's Mare, M E R E. M E E R E. Chapman. Chapman. Yes. At Gmail. And Carl? Carl W. Chapman is a single word. 
S C H. Awesome. Linda? Okay, now that should work. Now, how you would access this is you'd go up to, see if some people already have it synced. So it's going right to your, it's going right to your smartphone. Um, so if you were, again, if you were starting at the, the Gmail phase, you'd go into your Google launch pad here. You'd open that up. You'd open up Drive again. And you can just click on right over here, Shared with me. Shared with me. And you should see a document there. And if anybody doesn't see the document, just let me know, and I'll do my best to pretend I know how to fix things. <laughs> um, so Shared with me. And you should see it. Okay, so let me, let me bring it up. Um, student example. This so. might be the most fun thing I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> I can't so, you can have up to 50. You can have up to 50 people commenting at one time on one document, which would be absolute chaos, but it would be, it'd be insane. Yeah, but it'd be fun. But there you have it. And as you're typing and as you're editing, it's automatically making the changes. This, this is not shared to a student. You can say whatever you want here. You can do whatever you want to this paper. This is just a sample that I took from last semester. So this is like a, this is a dead document. I've, so you can do whatever you want now. So you can see already that you are, <laughs> to Tom Grady, you can see, uh, I, didn't do that. I you know, I know. I but see, I can, we can see who did it too, so. Um, like Tom Brady. Top right hand corner here are all the icons of who's on. Okay? And if you are updated and you have a picture, your picture will appear, all this other stuff. Um, let me just kind of expand this. How you do, let's say you don't like this title or you want a more specific title, you would highlight it and you can just go right up here and you can click insert com comment. And now you can see that I have a place where I can do a, a dialogue. So you'd highlight whatever it is that you want to bring attention to. Let's just say um, I don't like title. Now I click comment and it's there. And when they see it, they see a little highlight, they can click on it and they see my comment. So we're, as we're moving through, we are seeing the two phases of the collaboration that I talked about earlier, the instantaneous one that everybody's having fun with. The second one is the traditional comment feature. And the other one is right up here, that chat that I was talking about. You see a little dialogue box, and I can chat with Deb. I can also chat with anybody else simply by clicking and chat. And that's. This one's nice because it's a little bit more separated. It's not going onto the paper. It's live dialogue. When they close this out, it will save. Again, Google is saving everything, which is somewhat scary and also very interesting. But it's, it will be there. They'll be able to even bring up these chats again. They just have to look at their chat history, and it will be there. But I like this one for two students just now. I was just teaching. They were sitting across the classroom, and one of them started yelling, what do you mean by this? What do you mean? I was like, please, just use the chat feature. You can do that. And they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, it's, it's, it's instantaneous collaboration, editing. It makes the document feel alive. That's really it. That's, that's, that's using Google Docs. But let me, OK. Sure. Uh, talk about sort of the live moment in class sure. a little bit more that's really fresh. I can tell you that I have a student in my own 92 who is well healed in this. And okay. he really he humbled me by saying it would be really great if you use this instead of uh, just the thumb drive that we're sure. using, right? Yep. And I said, well, I, you know, I really want to use the cloud, but I'm not not well healed in it enough yet, so. But anyway, the, the only problem I see with him is he's pretty much devoted to it. Okay. He does not want to use Microsoft Word, 
and I suspect he doesn't own it. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is when he downloads this stuff, there is formatting issues. There's a couple of little formatting issues, absolutely. And, um, it's not 100%. No, like mar uh, margins. Yep. And he is, I think it's, it's a developmental thing. Like mm -hmm. He's just not getting the memo that every single time he hands in a paper, sure. he doesn't do that next step to format oh. it. Sure. So here's, so it's basically a two-part question as far as the, the live portion, and I can use a, a perfect example from yesterday. Really s stressing still to the uh, English 91 students that there's a certain aspect of the introductory paragraph that it should be engaging seems relatively basic, but it's still something that they're, they're struggling with. I get a lot of very worker type intros where it's just the thesis statement. There's no kind of that special hook there. The way that we were using this yesterday, again, was to make it very instantaneous. So, and they all know that I'm at any time we could share, we could project, we can look. And I just, we call everybody out right away in a nice, fair way. Bring up somebody's intro, everybody reads it together, They've all got it on their computers, too, but we're, we're engaging live. Everybody reads it, and you can just start going around. Is that engaging? Were you intrigued? Were you hooked in? No. Yes, no. You know, and really, but as you're doing it, students can also be making comments. Well, this is how it could be a little bit more engaging. It's just that it really is interactive, especially using it in the live format, and then the student, the student that you are looking at their intro, they can immediately start taking some of these suggestions. Is there a little bit of like, this is me being a Luddite, is there a little, a little bit of um, line load or overwhelmingness to that moment where you have all these voices coming at one person? Absolutely, you gotta, I'm lucky enough where I'm teaching a very small class right now. So it works with the smaller class, absolutely, and with control always with control, I kind of move around in a, in a controlled fashion. Um, maybe only asking one student. So we're looking at one student's paper, let this other student be the editor for right now, the commentator. Let them make some suggestions, you know, and, and just limit it to that, even though we're all looking at it again. We're all looking at it, we're looking at it up here, and we're looking at it on our screens. The second portion of that question is the formatting. I'm not 100% on that. What I've told some students, because I've noticed some of the formatting when they print or when they're trying to move it and it's changing, yeah. I'm not 100% sure. I do know that a couple of my students were taking it off of this and moving it to a Word document, and that was, that was transferring fine in a way. So I'd have to look, we'd have to look more together at what that student's doing and how they're typing it in and what their margins are right there because- They, they the, don't look right even in Google Docs, so I think- It's something, yeah. It's something there, um, which I'm not, I think that's more of an individual basis. Yeah. As of right now, I haven't had any formatting issues that I kind of heard I would be experiencing. Everybody has been working fine, and some students have been working back and forth between Microsoft Word. Um, what's the free one from Adobe? Uh, publisher? Uh, uh, I know what you works, not works, that's, that's the Mac one. But there's another one, and they've been working back and forth. And I think Google themselves, though I can't be sure, I think they're addressing some of these compatibility issues as we move along. It's been much more user friendly than I remember this when I first started using it. Does. I wonder how difficult it would be to start a Google Drive revolution in an online class. Because you really need the class time to sort of teach people how to use it. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I felt so, otherwise. I felt very confident by just taking that one solid class yeah. and really going over this. And then even because we were meeting four times, or just that extended period of time where we had kind of that lab portion of the English 91, it became an excellent way to use that. And we still do it. We're still doing little Google tutorials as we go along. And it, but again, it's very much like Word. So when I'm saying that, OK, you still don't have your page number there. It, it works just like that. You can do the header with the last name. Uh, it's still so. What I like about Google Drive is it's kind of combining teaching them about the computer process of the composing with Word, but it's also teaching them the online collaborative way. And that's the big difference because I haven't done online instruction. So maybe people who are here that have taught classes online, uh, uh, English classes, that is, because I guess we're all English and reading, mm. is that's the, the real difference 
Like, does this feel like a really different beast? Than Com what? Well, then teach conventionally online instruction with, say, Microsoft Word. Um, no, but it did occur to me that this might be a good way to work individually with an online student mm -hmm. on a paper um, if wow, I can't, like, really sure. if, because, uh, you know, I try to get them sometimes to just physically come in because usually they're close by. Right. So if that's, that's possible we do that because sometimes just commenting and emailing and emailing and emailing, we're, we're, we're not right. catching each other. Um, but this might be a good a good way to do it where we could sort of chat while we're looking at the paper, point about. That's, that's what I mean. When you, when you. Work in the paper, yeah, but not both have to be in the same room. When you start to work with this, I know it might seem a little overwhelming. Some of the things that are, we're commenting, it's really streamlined. Think about the other way too, either using like Dropbox, which I didn't use too much, but just having students emailing me attachments. Mm. And it, they just, I'm like, well, okay, which one is this? And then I'm opening this attachment, and I'm saving it to my computer, and then I'm saving another one to my computer. This, there's no more attachments. There's no more need for attachments. It's always going to be this working, developing. And you can upload a file to them. Absolutely, it's, it's all of that. Thing, you know, a student sends, you know, has a post of paper and e-learning, and that is an attachment because that's usually how we do it. Right. I could take the attachment, upload it to Google Drive, and say, "Can you um, send me your Gmail account? Let's look at it together in Google Drive." at 2 o'clock. Right. And then we could both be in there and... Again, just like traditional Office and Word, they give you all these options right on the file. You can download this, publish to the web. Google's really trying to get you off of attachments. Yeah. They, they're saying that they're not necessary anymore. But, and I was just reading this off of a Google thing, they said, if you insist, here's how you would do it. And it's just a link right there, and you can email these things as attachments. But for, for dorks like us, the formatting is so important. Oh, it's, it's incredibly... Like, just put text in an email drive, be crazy. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But this right now, I'm, I'm telling you, my, I have not experienced formatting issues. When, I've, when I'm having the English 91 students print me their paper off of this, it looks like they did it on Microsoft um, Word. Maybe a couple little things where I'm noticing where the letters are squeezed a little bit every now and then. But nothing, nothing major. But they could, if they just took an extra step, download it, open it in another program, fix anything that might be a problem, and then they could always submit it as a traditional printed Microsoft Word. Yeah, I have one student that uses Google Drive. He understands it a lot better than I do, but that's what he does. He just downloads it. Is Google Drive like an evolution of Google Docs, or is it still Google Docs? It's technically still Google Docs. The Drive is just kind of putting you this site. Tech, again, please. Don't quote me. This is the drive right here. This is the drive. Because from drive, if you go up to create, you can create multiple things in drive. So here's your PowerPoint. There's your document. So drive refers to this, I believe. And then it just kind of branches off from there. Because students can't, well, I guess they'll find a way to do it. But they can't really lose their work. Um, I'm kind of so tired of. Oh, I found my USB drive today. Yeah. Now, <coughs> I it, but I left it at home. Yeah. Oh, I'll just retype it. It's no big deal. It's, like, it's no big deal. Now, and here's the other. Remember everything you wrote? Here's the other thing, too. Once they share it with you, even if they mess up and hit the delete button, it's saved on your drive. Yeah. And I've had that happen. Some, and I've heard this, the student was freaking out. I, I must have lost it. And I'm like, hold on, let me bring it up. And I reshared it. Yeah. It just keeps going back. So. For those of us who are like really, I'll just say, organizationally desired to be. Yep. The yeah. other word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> could you, as a class, could you demo for them and get them all in their drives, and it's up there and say, you know, let's just do this. Let's create all the folders for the semester together. Yeah. And they can create their folders for all the papers they're going to be doing. Absolutely. You do it too. And I'm then positive you can do that. I'm right. positive there's a way to, to have that. Um, as of right now, I've just been doing it on my own, like right here. I, I, again, if you had multiple classes going, it might, you might need to do something like that. For me, it was just real simple. I just created when they were doing their essay two, essay three. I've already deleted essay one. I, I, I'm somebody who likes to keep a really minimum inbox. So essay one was done. I didn't want it hanging around anymore. I didn't need it. It was graded. They had their papers. It was all, all set. I've got my grades recorded. I just didn't need it anymore. 
and again, I'm still relying on traditional papers, so I know I'm handing those back, and I know they're putting them in their folder, so on and so forth. So you brought up that issue of access before. Yes. And you said especially for the students that you're working with um, in the Gateway program. So how do you manage that issue of access? How do you? <clears throat> well, with access, I mean, unfortunately, they need to be able to access a computer. And if they don't have it at home, they're going to have to, is that what you mean, come in here and yeah. using it? But it can, but oddly enough, I have worked with one student, and I can't imagine doing this. He wrote one of the drafts of his paper on his phone. He had a smartphone. He had a smartphone, and he did it. Because once you, once, again, this is where I fall a little short of the tech, but you can sync this with your smartphone. And then when you bring up your Gmail on your phone, it will have the, the Google Drive feature, and you just click on it there, too, and it will bring it up. It will be in a much smaller area, much, much, yeah. but you can do it. You can do it, and I had a student do that, mm -hmm. and they went away, and that's when they said they wrote it. They were on a bus trip somewhere, and on the bus, they were bored, and so they were working on their paper. Damn it, watch the potholes! Right, <laughs> right there. <laughs> the, the other idea with that is when you have the class, and it's not going to work for everybody for the, the smartphones, not everybody has it, but it will work with this, you can also sync the, the Google Calendar. That's really simple as well. Hey, a draft is due by this date. Set it, set the, all it does is it just alerts the class. It's a group. So they're going to get an email. They're going to get an email saying the rough draft is due Friday, don't forget. If they have a smartphone with it synced, they're going to get a, a, a beep on that and they're going to see that too. And that's really easy too, and it's very, it's just like working with any calendar, but it's right here in the Google launch again, that, that drive. Just go down to calendar, open it up, and you just create your events, and you, you, you need to share, again, with who you were sharing with, create the event. Oops, sorry. Right here. Yeah, you can do, you, you could do, mul yeah, I can set the alerts. I can set all the alerts. I can, you know, who am I sending this to? Because again, you'd add your guests. This is where you'd put the student's email address in again. Much like Google, once you've put it in once, it's going to populate it for you. It's not like you have to memorize these things once you, once you get going. Um, so it's real easy. And, and that's a constant reminder. I can set it up to remind them two weeks before, one week before, three days before, two hours before. I can set up as many reminders as I want. So this is a lot like e-learning. It really is. In, in, the, in the way I love the auditing, but, you know, and it's sort of it's just Umar, when they say like, "I worked so hot on this paper," mm -hmm. you can audit exactly their engagement with it and say, "Yeah, 15 minutes." Yeah, and I find it's really, uh, really helpful, and I think it's 15 minutes of intense work on a paper <laughs> equals two hours yes. of lack of physical effort. And again, when oh, if. No. With all the students knowing this, too, that you're going to be reviewing these aspects, it's really a moment of owning up to your work because if I bring it up and I say, really? And they know that I'm going to do this. Really, you worked on this hard last night. Sure about that? You want me to check? Because I can check right now. And you, you will get honesty. You'll get, you'll get responsible answers. And, and people will know. They'll say, yeah, you're right. I, I, I did it. I got to work on it more. I see that now. I see that. And projecting papers up onto the screen, there wasn't one student that had a, an, a, an intro yesterday that wasn't engaging, right? So they didn't write an engaging intro. As soon as it was up on the screen, they were like, ah, I see it. I know. I know. I can see it now. You know, like, it's not engaging. It's not hooking me in the way that the previous student's intro did. It's like that instantaneous. Whether they fix it or not, I mean, that's where we're always struggling anyway. But at least they're seeing it, and we're all engaging with it, and we can all comment. Not just spoken, but comments that stick. Comments that stick to the document. Um, any, has anyone expressed concerns about privacy because it's in the cloud versus <clears throat> you know e-learning or it's a closed system? No, I haven't had any of my students right now express that kind of concern, and I wouldn't know how private it is. It's private enough where they can set their own sharing uh, options on it, um, and that's kind of the limit of my knowledge about how private this is. Yeah, someone probably. Couldn't find it. Right. Find it working. Go into it. Well, I don't, usually, I, to, not to stereotype, but usually younger students don't care at all about those, right. those issues anyway. Yep. But uh, you know, uh, sometimes other students, more non-traditional students, might say, you know what, I try to keep all my <coughs> stuff off. Off. Google, yeah. Right. I don't like Facebook. I don't yeah. Do this, that, and the other. And I always wonder about 
making it a course requirement to sure. have a Gmail account or something that kind of, you know, because once Google Gets oh, absolutely. And I mean, if, if, you, it's like they start pulling every if you have any kind of conspiracy theorist person, Google yeah, is going to be I mean, something they might not want to engage in. Yeah. But luckily, I have all young students right now who were just, most of them had, world, they mostly yeah. had Gmail set up anyway. Yeah. Well, it might be interesting, you know, if we had some <clears throat> Google walk in the room to say, because I was looking at this, and it's kind of like, um, reminds me of, I use Dropbox frequently, and, and I use it with college as well, is that what's in it for Dropbox? And I feel like, I suspect that Dropbox is going to say, we're making it free, and there's no pop-ups yeah. to get you in. And then eventually, we're going to say, so you want more bandwidth? We want $5. Right. They do. That's what they do. Right. That's what they do. You want more storage. Right. Yeah. But with this, I'm wondering, is it that they have a Google mail address Mm. That now it's kind of like great. Now we can send you, we can sell you soap right. through an email. Yep. If that's all they want, I think that I mean could be. I, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, and I mean, yeah, that 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 privacy issue is going to be there if the, if the person wants to make that the issue, and then you're going to have to deal with that on an individual basis. Right. I'm just curious if that. I mean, right. I sort of didn't expect it considering right. the population that you're working with. Yep. But I could see it. I mean, I could see it. It makes sense. Um, so that's that. So that's, that's just a, the one thing I can stress. And it, since everybody right now is already seeing, just tonight, tomorrow, share with each other a document and really just do it together. You, you know, like really just it's, it's once you get, again, I can't stress enough, I am not a tech person at all. This is the <laughs> limit of what I do. But once I started doing it more, it really was, it's like that. They've made this very, very user friendly, very user friendly. Even with the whole idea when I put that presentation together, the PowerPoint, I've, I've only done one PowerPoint in my entire life. This one was so much easier. Even right down to linking in video because Google is affiliated or owns YouTube. So when you click video, it's like, take it from YouTube. And it's right there. It's not embedding codes or anything like that. It's all very integrated. Okay, it's Brian, when you had us sh have a shared community, we all used a Gmail account. Yes. And so that has to, the management of this has to be within the Google world. So for example, if you put in my BCC address. Right. It's, it's that's going to have some issues. It, right. Not complete, not complete exclusion. Um, I've used this before where it was a group, but it's outside of school where somebody didn't have a Gmail account and they were still able to see the documents. I'm not sure what they could do or couldn't do, but I know they could still see the documents. But so, it's so much better to be have the Google right. home base. Right, so for class, classroom management, mm -hmm. I'm just trying to think of how many envir environments the students have to be in to be a student there, <coughs> and they have to be in the environment of their Gmail account. Right. Period. Yep. That's just going to have to be a reality to them. Yep. That they're going to have to look at their BCC email for some stuff, and for English 101 or 092 or whatever yep. it is, it's going to have to be Google. And again, like the other ways with email, you can link them. So if I email their Gmail account, they'll get a notification in BCCs if they set it up. Right. So if they right. set that up. Yeah, yeah. And I. I do like this because it, this right now, the Google Drive and all this stuff works really well with e-learning. So when I'm linking, for instance, when I'm publishing a link out of Google Drive to e-learning, I haven't had any issues. So if they're on e-learning and they click on a, a, a form, which we didn't get to forms, I kind of thought we might not, but an assessment form, it's automatically opening and it's embedding right into e-learning. They're very compatible. E-learning and Google is very compatible right now. I haven't had any issues with it. So it's working really well. And I don't think it's too much to ask for the students to just be able to kind of navigate both of those worlds, the Google and the e-learning. Well, I do, but you know, it makes me think of all the, the little disclaimers we have on courses now and whether we should say <laughs> what students need to get into mm -hmm. class. You know, we have like yeah. themes and all this stuff, mm -hmm. but it's like uh, and never ending, you know. But even if you put Google, it's like putting portfolio, students want to know what that means anyway, mm -hmm. unless someone explains it to I think this might be a, a good idea if um, we do any online tutoring in the Writing Center oh. in the future, which we've done in the past, but awesome I, hope, I, I suspect that will be coming again with the mm. new yeah. director, whoever that is. So again, here's the, the revision history real quick. I can just click on this, 
and it pops up who typed what and where they were changing at what times. I mean, it's, 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 it's crazy how much they're, they're tracking this by, by the minute all the way up. And you can just look at the changes. So it's, it's, it's an interesting way, and I think it's, it's very useful for the student as well so that they can monitor their own progress and see what did I type today, what did I type tomorrow, and... I think a lot of students do have Gmail accounts already because I know, like, if, you're, if you have an Android, any kind of Android phone, you <coughs> can't really do anything on it without a Gmail right. account. And even if they do, I still try to stress creating a separate yeah. one. Yeah. I do. I mean, I, I think it, it works for us, yeah. and I think it would work for the students. I like to have Instructor McGuire. I like to know when I put that up there, that, that's the realm I'm in. And when it's so just, it's yeah, I know, I know, <laughs> I know. And, and when, I, uh, when I'm in my Brian McGuire Gmail, that's the world I'm in. And I try never to let the two combine.